So now that I'm moving to Sony, does that mean I have to start hating on Nikon? So in the photography and videography community right now, there's such a debate about are you Canon, are you Nikon, are you Sony, or are you just not a photographer? It's such a weird debate that people get so obsessed over what brands you use the whole time. I mean, brands are important, but they're important to suit what your needs are. As in each brand, I think of those three main brands, each one is tailored towards a certain person. So you have to work out, am I best suited towards this brand, this brand, or this brand, instead of just saying, this is what X uses, this is what Y uses, and therefore I'm gonna jump straight to that brand. Now, in this video, as the title suggests, I'm moving from Nikon to Sony, and there's a lot of reasons for this, and I think Sony is far better than Nikon, but in certain ways. In certain ways, Nikon's better, in certain ways, Sony's better. I'm gonna compare the two, and by the end, hopefully you'll get a comparison of what's better on Nikon, what's better on Sony, and then it'll make you decide because the features on Sony for me outweigh the benefits of Nikon by far. So first I'm gonna quickly tell you about what gear I have now, what I use now with Nikon, and what I'm changing to with Sony. I've bought a few bits and pieces for Sony so far, but a few more to come. So yeah, we'll cover all those bases. Then I'm gonna do a quick comparison between the two, the benefits of Sony, benefits of Nikon, and then at the end I'm gonna discuss why I think Sony's way better choice for me personally. So if you're in the same scenario as me, I'm gonna explain what type of photography I'm into, what type of videos I'm into, all that sort of stuff. So if you kind of align with the same stuff I'm into, then there's a good chance that Sony's the better choice for you. And if you decide you're completely opposite to what I do, then Nikon's the best choice for you, or Canon. Obviously Canon's kind of, I'm not really comparing Canon in this video. Fuji's also class, they're all class. I'm not, like, it's kind of this stupid debate about my camera company's better, mine's better. It's like if Fuji's for you, if Pentax for you, just, just own it, just, just, be that weirdo with a Pentax. And to wrap up the video, I'm gonna have some very commonly asked questions about Nikon, Sony, and changing between the two. So the camera I have now is this little beast. I mean, it's a bit of a chunk, a bit of a chungus fat one. D5 300, uh, I mean, look at the size of that grip, it's thick. But, I mean, this is class. Now you might look at this and go, yeah, it's not a very advanced camera. It's very intermediate, almost beginner-esque. But, I mean, it still has the flip screen, which most cameras these days don't even have but it's really good. I mean, I've taken all these photos with this camera and it's never disappointed. It's really good for photos. Now, the one downfall of this is video is awful, but we'll get to that when we're comparing the two. Lens I use, 30 millimeter, 85 millimeter. This is so good, 85, 1.8. And then my most commonly used is 10 to 20 millimeter because you get that wide shot, really good for video, really good for everything like that. And what I'm changing to is the Sony a7C. I'm gonna make a whole video about why I think that's an awesome choice to change if you're looking to go into full frame or you're just looking to change to Sony, I think this is a really good camera to change into. I bought the Sigma 12-24 lens. Again, I'm gonna do a quick, you know, street photography POV on that. And I've got the Tamron 28-200. to That's not the best lens in the world, but it's just really cheap and it'll cover all bases until I work my way into getting more lenses. So some of you right now are probably thinking, have I tried the Z5, Z6, Z7, all that sort of stuff. And I have tried them and I do think they're insane but I focus a lot on video. Now, quick comparison between the two. If you're any way into video, anything like that, you're gonna have to go for Sony. Nikon's autofocus is so bad. It is improving, they have recent updates, you know, they're getting more software and everything, but it's just, it's just not up to scratch. Like, there's often times where I'd be videoing myself or taking photos of something and it would just lose focus for no reason. Like, I'd be, even now, let's say you're videoing now, I'm filming on the Sony A7C. If I'm filming now in the Nikon, sometimes I'd just be filming really well lit and everything, and then it'll just suddenly decide to focus on the back of the screen. And that's just so annoying, especially if you're trying to get like high level content. If you're filming something really smooth and then all of a sudden it just flashes out of focus, it's just not good. And then for photos, obviously, the more better autofocus you have, the easier it is to take photos, especially the kind of type of photos I do, because I do very fast action photos. I like do a lot of like dropping stuff and you know, wide angle slamming stuff down, trying to get that motion in pictures. If you're trying to get motion and you're relying on autofocus, if someone's running or something, that's really important you get it in focus. So for that kind of stuff, if you're into fast action photography, anything like that, I think Sony is better. But I haven't had too much time with the Z6. I only had it for a tiny bit. For a Z6, the photos I found were pretty much the same autofocus as the Sony. So I don't want to say for photos, you should always go for Sony, but for video autofocus, definitely Sony. It's just way better, way better. Another reason to head over to Sony is their innovation is just so much better than Nikon. I mean, Sony are coming out with a new thing. They're always pushing the boundaries. They released how many cameras last year? Like, like I don't know, loads last year. And then Nikon haven't 
you know, released that much and it kind of feels like Nikon are catching up all the time. I'd love for Nikon to overtake them and just lead it because I I've, I've, I get to a few positives on Nikon a bit. First, I'm gonna do positives Sony, then positives Nikon. But just Nikon are always the ones leading and then it seems like Nikon are catching up. I mean, they're still, they released the Z6 II, which I was gonna buy, to be honest. But then it was just like, it was basically, it was being compared. People were saying, what's better, the Z6 II or the Sony a7 III? And the a7 III came out like two and a half years before. So if it takes Nikon like that two and a half years to catch up to make a similar level camera and then Sony might have this a7 IV coming out later this year. I mean, if you're just constantly catching up, you always want the best and the newest. So in terms of innovation, Sony wins that every day of the week. In terms of Nikon, the positives are the lenses, I think. I think Nikon lenses are insane. They're so nice, they're pretty affordable, they have a huge selection of them. I've always found they're so sharp, like the, the quality of them is insane. Not that the Sonys are bad, but the Sony has so many Sigma and Tamron alternatives, a lot of people end up just going for Sigma and Tamron and not the Sony themselves. And I'm not saying the Sony lenses are bad, I'm just saying you're less likely to buy the Sony lenses because there's so many amazing third-party lenses, which is almost a positive for Sony that they've got so many options out there. Like if you want a really budget one, you can get that. If you want the expensive one, you get that. For the Nikon Z series, it feels like they're all very high level, which is good but bad obviously because price savings and everything like that. Also another random positive for Nikon, this might feel really weird, it might feel really nerdy for me to be saying this, but the file storage and file and everything like that, filing, I don't know the technical word for it, but it's just way better, way easier, way cleaner, better files. Sony's confusing. I mean, you download a video and then it's got it's video in some private section, clip section video, and then it's got your thumbnails downloaded and it's got all this and it's all split up. And then when you're importing RAWs, sometimes I can't even edit RAWs when I download them because it's some, I don't know. A weird one about the Sony. Now, I haven't found it too bad, but everyone complains about the menu systems. I can really see why they complain and having used better menu systems, you can really understand why there's such a complaint about it. But I mean, the Sony menu system is bad. Like it, it's way worse than Nikon's. Like not, there's no question around that. If you want simplicity, if you don't know much about photography or anything like that, then Nikon's will be way easier for you to navigate. But once you know about photography and all that, you can find your settings pretty well because you know exactly what you're looking for. But yeah, if, if they could update the menu to the most recent menu, that would be brilliant. The Sony A7, S3 apparently has the new menu system, which is really simple to use. And for some reason, the A7C, which came out after it, like a month or two after it, doesn't have that menu system. So that's a bit of a pain. Also, the last downside to Sony is the handling. It just doesn't feel as good as a Nikon. A Nikon, I don't know, it kind of molds your hands well. It's pretty, pretty anthropometric and everything. It just, I don't know, it had the finger grooves really nice. Sony's kind of gone for this sleek look. So the Sony looks way better to like take a picture of it. Or when you're walking around, it looks a lot better, I think but in terms of holding it, it just feels like slippier. It's got a shallow, shallower grip. I don't know, if that's something you're into, if you've got massive hands, maybe some Sony cameras won't be for you. The Sony A7C is definitely quite small and compact, so yeah, if your big chunk of hands are trying to fill it with this mini camera, maybe that's a bad choice. I think just choose your brand that you want. I mean, for me, I need autofocus, I need good video, I need to take fast shots, I need full frame. I need a small body to travel around with me and that's why I went for the Sony a7C and changed to Sony. Now, if you're strictly only doing photography, no video, but then Nikon may be better for you. And again, Canon, research Canon, it's insane. I mean, most people out there are with Canon. But you're also looking at these two cameras or these two brands and you're like, what's better than the other? And they're both good. And what I find a lot online is that a lot of people with Sony will tend to trash Nikon. It's almost like you're with Sony, you have to put down Nikon, which isn't good for the camera industry. You really, you know, you want Nikon to do well because if Nikon do well and they bring out some good stuff, that means your brand that you like, Sony, can then kind of kind of try and replicate that stuff and build better stuff. So before I end, I'm just gonna cover some very commonly asked questions about Nikon, Sony, transferring between the two. I asked you guys on Instagram through a question poll, got loads of responses and loads of people seem to want my old camera. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not selling it because I'll still probably use it for one or two things. And you know, it's sentimental. It's my first camera. I took like pretty much all my photos with it. And uh, yeah, I know it's not a great camera in comparison to this new setup, but yeah, for now it's not for sale. Some people even asked for it for free. So I'm sorry to those people. So someone says, what is the biggest disadvantage of using Nikon? And personally, it's the autofocus by a long leap. Is it price affordable for students? And is it for a beginner? Now for beginners, I'm gonna say don't go for Sony because the menu systems are a bit more complicated. The Sony like full frame cameras are really expensive. I mean, I don't know, I haven't tried too many out there, but I know that Nikon and Canon are really good beginner cameras, especially the DSLRs. You can pick one up for like 300 quid 
insane and then buy a second a second uh, lens. Like don't buy the kit lens or do buy the kit lens if you're starting out. But usually the kit lenses are so bad. And a lot of people are asking, is this forever? Or like, you know, are you, is this like a finalized thing or are you using both for now? Yes, I'm moving to Sony. I'm gonna be using my Sony all the time, but that's not to say I really do love Nikon. So yeah, I could go back. But yeah, here, let me know, what do you prefer, Sony or Nikon? Leave it down below. Price of the Sony. Uh, the Sony A7C, which I got was, well, generally it's around 2000. I got it for 1,700. How was your first impression? It's a beast. It's one of the best looking cameras. Also, one of the best things is now I can go close to the camera and be blurry. I mean, that's exciting. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to cracking on with the Sony camera. I've got so many cool ideas. I've got some short films coming up. Now that I can actually film stuff, really excited for YouTube, giving some content to you. So if you want some specific content, leave it down below. I'm really excited. I'm gonna try and put out two videos a week. Yeah, just keep keep cracking on. Keep the keep some short films going, get some tutorials, get some vlogs, video tutorials, photo tutorials, I should say as well. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little video. I'll be doing some more, you know, talks about the gear and all that kind of stuff, some POV stuff to come. But yeah, until then, I'm really excited to test it out. Hopefully you'll see some cool shots, cool videos on my Instagram and everything like that. But yeah, till then, I'll have a short video, short film for you coming out this week. And yeah, be ready for it on Saturday. See you soon.